What's up, YouTube? Jake Pitts from Black Veil Brides here, back with another video. We're doing a gear review today of Tone Forge Disruptor by Joey Sergis Tones. They were kind enough to send me over the plugin to check it out, make some music with it, and share it with you all. Now, if you do like what you hear in the video and you want to check it out for yourself, use the link down in the description below and you can try it out for 14 days for free. And if you end up wanting to purchase it and you use my link below, you will get $40 off the purchase price. So you can save a little bit of money there. Just a quick disclaimer, I was not paid to make this video. I was given the plugin to try it out, but all opinions and thoughts are 100% my own. So let's dive in and see what it sounds like in a mix. There you have it. Tone Forge Disruptor sounds absolutely insane. Let's dive into the session and I'll show you uh, what I created with this. All right, so here we are in the session. So this Tone Forge Disruptor plugin is Dino Cazares from Fear Factory's uh, signature amp plugin. I believe this is a uh, kind of like his hot rotted JCM 800, Marshall JCM 800. Uh, right out of the box, this thing sounds really, really great. So you have, you know, your your pre effects pedals here. You can click to add what you want there. You know, a typical thing if you're going for like a heavy tone, you'd put an overdrive pedal in front of it. Uh, however, I did not use one with these tones. I just didn't necessarily feel like I needed it. It sounded great without one, but you can by all means use one. You have the amp. Your cab section, you can uh, use dual cabs. You can blend them together. I just use the single condenser microphone. With the Toneforge plugins, I prefer the condenser microphones. I think it just has the best sound. That's my personal preference. Yours might be different. We have some different cabs here. And then you can use, you can load your own impulse responses if you have your own that you really love. You can actually blend the clean DI signal as well. So that can help you get, if your tone is lacking definition in the notes, you can blend in a little bit of the actual DI signal and that can give you a, a little bit of a cleaner sound with a little bit more pick attack, which can be really cool for metal. And you have your different microphones here. You have your condenser, you have a 421, you have your standard dynamic, you know, Shure 57, and then a ribbon microphone. I really like how the condenser sounds in these plugins. So that's what I typically will go with. And you can change the microphone position here. They have the uh, the graphic image here where you can actually click it, grab it, move it around however you like, which is really cool. There's a phase switch. So if you're say blending this with an impulse response and it just sounds crazy, you can you know flip the phase on there to make sure it's in phase. You got your input, your output. So you can adjust those accordingly. There's a really cool thing in this plugin, which is the mode. So you have, you can turn this off and just have it standard, but you have a six string mode, seven string and eight string. So if you're doing anything in super low tunings, like this track that, uh, that you just heard is in drop G. So it's pretty low. So I did it on a seven string. I put it in the seven string mode, put it to the correct key. And I'm not sure exactly what they're doing behind the scenes, but they're doing some magic where uh, I believe it's just tightening up your low end. It's going to make it so it's not sounding super flubby or woofy or just muddy in the mix. So there's some magic right there happening for you already. Now you then have your post effects. Uh, I'm not using any of these on this. They're just in here. Uh, this lo-fi tone, we're going to go over that. I actually used a preset for the intro just a straight up preset that's created in the plugin that comes with it. All I did was turn off this delay. So that's kind of where this this preset started from. And then I just tweaked everything for my main tone. Now, this this part's really, really cool because typically when you track guitars and everything, you know, you have to do post-processing, you have to EQ things. So this has everything built in. It's basically an entire guitar signal chain built in so you don't have to do anything. If you look here, you see that I just have Tone Forge Disruptor on the two guitar DIs. If we mute these this is what it sounds like so it's just just the amp plug-in 
I have it going through this guitar bus. The only thing on the bus is just a tiny bit, 1.2 of the S1, just to widen them a tiny bit more. This is just a input. Uh, the, it, it, there's an EQ, but I'm just using it for the input for any automation that I do later on. So I can just move the, the guitar bus volume up and down without affecting any volume automation I'm doing. I can just use that. So you can see here the guitar bus is is basically empty other than that. Just a little bit, a tiny bit of widening. Otherwise, it's just the Tone Forge plugin. So this is the main tone I use. I did create another one. So you have the three amps here. You have a clean amp, the Martyr. You have the Replica, which is the JCM 800. And then you have... Uh, this guy right here, which is, there's basically like five different amps in here that are modeled after some signature Dino Cazares guitar tones. I really thought the monolith one sounded really, really cool. So I did create a tone with that as well. The other cool thing is there is this DI match technology. So this is super cool because say you have a guitar that's maybe, you know, not the best guitar uh, and you're just trying to get a decent sound or say you tracked uh, an album with a bunch of different guitars and it's very inconsistent you can use this di match to make the guitar di signal sound a little bit more consistent so you can match the di now i captured my guitar's di here my seven my schecter seven string i captured the di and saved it in this preset so that will come with there you don't have to use it if you don't want to but you absolutely can di match to my guitar if you want, and you can see if that will maybe help your sound a little bit better. Definitely something to experiment with and try out. However, my presets will have my DI match in it uh, if you do decide that you want to use that. Uh, so you have the, the post EQ. This is great. You have an analog EQ, which uh, in this preset, I don't think I actually even did anything with this. Uh, it doesn't look like I touched it. So I, I like to use visual EQs like this where I can see what I'm looking at. Um, this is kind of what I notched out. Um, let's just solo up the one guitar here and I'll stick it down the center. So without the EQ, you know, there's just kind of some fizzy stuff up here in the two to four K area. So that's kind of a problem area usually with guitars. So I just dipped some of that down, got some rid of some of those bad frequencies. And then I took some of the lower mids out just to get rid of some of the mud. And I boosted some of the top end here uh, just to make it a little bit brighter, rolled off the super high fizzy stuff. So with the EQ, without it, so it just really cleans it up and makes it fit in the mix and, and makes it sound mix ready. So there you have uh, also a kill resonance. So you can actually turn this into a dynamic EQ. So say you have a frequency that's just really like maybe in the low end that you want to tame, you can use this kill resonance. You can set it into a dynamic mode. So you can go here, create this, and then you can click dynamic EQ. You can change your threshold, your attack, your release. And you can turn it into, you know, something that would, uh, you know, tame the low end, or you could use it up in the high frequencies and, and have it tame that as well. You can use it any way you can imagine. Um, I didn't do that on here. I, I thought this just sounded great. And you come here to the, the limiter and the low end compressor, and that's why I didn't need to do it in that EQ, because this is kind of doing it. So I've got a limiter. Looks like it's not even on. Uh, okay, <laughs> I thought I had it on. I guess it's not even on. So there is a limiter there. I didn't even use that, uh, but we do have the low end compressor on. So you've got your crossover here where you can, th this is kind of like your dynamic EQ, but this is going to be for your low end. To tame your low end, you don't want to have, you know, in your mix, you don't want to have a ton of the super low stuff. Like when palm mutes are happening, you don't want that to be muddying up your mix. So this will help tame palm mutes and parts where the low frequencies really like jump out. This is going to help grab them and, and, and pull them down. So I'm barely using it if I even am. So you can see there on the, the, the low open note, boom, it, it clamps down on it. I guess I had this on zero. 
I guess I dialed the tone in so well you didn't even need to use it, but it's there. And I mean, it it definitely works. It sounds awesome. I spent several days messing with this plugin when I really sat down and dived in. This this is the tone that I came up with, and I think it sounds really really cool. I mean, it sounds like a mix ready album tone uh, to my ears, you know. I think it sounds absolutely phenomenal. So let's go check out the other tone I created. So I, I made another one with the monolith and I captured my DI on that, on that as well. So we have my DI match there. Again, I'm just using the condenser microphone on the single cab. So I use the monolith and it's, it's sort of a similar tone. I feel like this one's maybe a little more scooped. So I'll just copy paste that one over. So this one sounds like this. I mean, it sounds super sick. And it sounds absolutely crushing. Again, I'll turn these off just so you can see this is just DI. And then on the second part, I just have a, the, the same guitar duplicated over and it's just down an octave. So it's in double drop G. It just kind of makes it sound a little bit nastier on the second half of that. Uh, so this intro, lo-fi guitars, you can take an EQ and, you know, just kind of take your low and your high and cut it and get that kind of filtery sound. Well, this plugin has it already built in. I literally loaded up a preset, uh, the Lo-Fi Anthem Lead. I just loaded that up, and that's all I used. All I did was turn the delay off. And this came with the delay on. I turned that off, and I did not touch another knob. So you can see how great it is right out of the box. Uh, the presets here, uh, Joey Sturge's presets, Lo-Fi Anthem Lead right there. There's a ton of presets already. I mean, it, it was just absolutely perfect. I didn't touch a knob. I didn't touch anything. This would be... All right, let's let's reload reload the lo-fi. Anthem lead. Turn the delay off. That's it. It's done. It sounds perfect. Real quick, one other really cool thing is you can change the the size of the plugin, which is fantastic because sometimes you want it depending on what kind of monitor you have that you're looking at, if you have like a 1440p or 4K monitor, you need to blow it up and make it bigger. Or if you're on a 1080 or 720 monitor, you know, whatever you're looking at, you want it to be a little bit smaller. So that's great. I love that. Something super simple, but I think it's very important. Yeah, it's the perfect lo-fi tone. So that is Tone Forge Disruptor. Absolutely crushing tones out of this thing. The clean amp also sounds really great. I didn't really go into that in this video, obviously, uh, but the clean amp is phenomenal. If you like those dreamy leads, there's great effects that you can use to get some really amazing clean sounds. Uh, this amp just inspired me to make some absolutely crushing heavy, heavy shit. So that's what we went with. And uh, I think it did, did a wonderful job. I would absolutely use this on a on a production. It just sounds insanely good, and I'm really happy with how uh, the sound the the tones came out that I created. If you want to find me more often, you can follow me over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Jake Pitts. I'm live usually about three times a week there, shredding Black Veil songs, hanging out, being goofy, doing stupid shit. So if you want to come hang out and join the Twitch family, feel free to also check out the description below and find that link and give me a follow there. Thanks again for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.